Right, so welcome to the Light to Be platform. Today we're going to be interviewing two interns from Clean Planet Energy. Now, Clean Planet Energy is a company that is tackling climate change through producing clean fuels from waste plastics. And today I've got Jack and Kajal here with me, who are two interns that are currently working at Clean Planet Energy. Um, thank you so much for agreeing to be interviewed. You guys are going to tell us a bit about yourselves, the internship and what you've learned. And this is going to be really useful for any future students that may be either wanting to work for Clean Planet Energy or a company that's tackling climate change in the future. So thanks a lot for agreeing to this. Um, if you'd like to start by introducing yourselves and saying a bit about yourselves, what you study at university, what university you went to, just to give people a bit of background. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, me and Jack, we both study the same course at university. We study chemical engineering. We've just finished our, finished our second year and we're going into our third year. Um, we study at the University of Nottingham um, and yeah, we're both doing this summer internship at Clean Planet Energy. Yeah, I, I don't know whether it's worth um, adding what um, courses we did at A-level. I did okay. um, physics and uh, chemistry at A-level. Yeah, that is useful context because um, those of the students that are watching this that might still be in secondary school might want to know what pathway they have to take to get into this sort of career. Um, so Kajal, did you do similar subjects at A-level too? Um, slightly so, I did chemistry, biology and maths. Um, so yeah, kind of that key. Did you do chemistry, Jack? Or yeah, ma maths, physics and chemistry. So I didn't do. Yeah. Brilliant. And whilst you're at university, first of all, well done for getting the internship. How did you find out about the opportunity or Clean Planet Energy? Um, I actually found out um, from the, the careers team are really useful at um, sending out opportunities and uh, I hadn't actually heard about Clean Planet Energy before this but um, once I read about the internship and, and about the company itself you know obviously I was really interested in and that's what motivated me to, to, to seek out this internship yeah. No similarly for me as well I think um, the careers team kind of shared that and from that I kind of looked at their website and looked at what they did and I thought that it would be quite interesting and something for me to do during the summer which would kind of help me and also kind of grow me as like a professional as well um, and so yeah that's how I found out about it. Yeah and Clean Planet Energy are doing amazing work turning waste plastic into super clean fuels is um, a career in tackling climate change something that you guys explored before or was something you started looking at when you began your internship at Clean Planet Energy? Um, I, personally I'd say it's something that's been at the, the forefront of me doing chemical engineering. Um, when I was at A-level I did an extended project based on like tackling climate change and the CO2 crisis so obviously like Clean Planet Energy are, are directly like trying to tackle that issue. Um, yeah. so, so it's definitely been at the forefront of my mind. Definitely, I'm kind of similar as well. Um, even before I started university, I kind of chose chemical engineering because it had that sustainability and the environmental aspect of it. Um, and so that's originally one of the reasons when I was kind of like writing my personal statement for UCAS and stuff like that. That's what I talked about a lot in my um, statement um, and so yeah that sustainability aspect really match as well with clean plant energy. That's brilliant that you had that interest beforehand and you get to explore that further in the real working world. Uh, so you get the internship, you guys are obviously working from home, working on whatever projects which I'm sure we'll get into in a little bit, but what do you actually do on a day-to-day -day basis? If I was a student looking to have an internship at Clean Planet Energy or a company that does similar work, what can I expect to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis or projects that I'd expect to be working on? Yeah, well, um, working with uh, such a, like a, a small company, you obviously get to dip your fingers into loads of different parts of, of the company, um, whether it's just um, the general meetings, you know, getting used to how a company runs day to day and the communication that the team members have to like continue throughout the day, especially when um, CP at the moment with the COVID and everything is is based 
everyone's working from home. So a lot of it is just that constant communication, you know, the team meeting up and discussing different objectives and and just trying to coordinate really. That's a big part of it. Um, I don't know, Rebecca, Joel, what you want to further that? Um, I mean, you mentioned on a day to day basis, so I think it's a lot of meetings, first of all, um, not only within the internal team within Clean Planet Energy, but also with vendors and other companies that we work with um, in the UK. And we also have other companies um, in Asia that we also work with. Um, so it's a lot of those meetings. And then us personally, as Jack said, like we kind of work on different things. And so whether it's researching maybe a new potential process that we could kind of start looking into or feasibility studies or kind of just calculations and Excel basis um, points and PowerPoints and kind of gauging if something could be done and then passing that information on and kind of working in a team to be able to build an idea. Yeah, it sounds like you've really got a hands on real life experience of the world of work within the company. How important do you think this sort of experience is going to be for your future careers and your personal development? Yeah, yeah, vital, really, because obviously I've had work experience in the hospitality sector, um, like as a lot of young people do. But getting that first experience at a, a proper company is pretty vital. And just to get your head around, you know, just the day to day, basically, like you, you come out of university or or of A-level and you're not sure exactly like how you're going to make that transition from you know academia to, to real life and I think that's probably one of the most helpful things is just to get a, a small taste even if it's just you know for three months like what we've done. Yeah definitely I kind of echoing what he said again it's that idea of you can leave university with so much technical knowledge but whether you can communicate and have an understanding of how to kind of again communicate explain things understand things from other people understand how an engineering team works who to go to if you're like confused or it's that's a really important aspect that you obviously can't learn at university unless you get some experience in the real world and I think that is the most important thing that you can gain from it. Yeah I definitely agree with both of you I think that real life experience is vital for your own personal and professional development um, as a student, when you're on your penultimate year, it is the time where people are looking at internships and trying to get that work experience. And it can often be a bit of a stressful time for a lot of people going through different applications, doing cover letters and CVs and tests and that sort of thing. What advice would you give for students that are going into their second year or maybe going into their final year and still looking for internships? What advice would you give um, to them in terms of application process and looking for opportunities? Um, I'd, I'd probably say obviously start early as, as early as you can. Um, I was very lucky obviously to get this in at the end of my second year. A lot of people will, especially with uh, chemical engineering, they wait until the fourth year if you're doing a master's where you have like a, you try and get a full 12 month uh, placement. But getting that before is obviously very helpful. And then I'd probably say um, use the careers advisors and, and team that you have available at whichever institution you you're a part of because they can be extremely helpful at trying to find you you know jobs or different activities that you can try and boost your CV with. Definitely yeah I think as well kind of um, persevere because you're going to get a lot more no's than yes which is a really big thing um, and obviously I haven't really gone through that process of trying to get a grad job or a full year placement but I think probably what I've learned from getting this internship is just try and kind of stay a little bit organised, keep track of what you're applying to, when you're applying to. Um, and so it's quite useful like if you have an Excel or something just to keep note and also you can track your own progress and also you just kind of know if you've heard back from a company, if you've got no's from everyone and so you need to kind of keep pushing forward how many interviews you've got and you can kind of keep track of it in yourself because otherwise it might get a little bit overwhelming and then it's also quite helpful because you're probably going to be busy doing like your university life and your coursework and everything that kind of goes along with that so as long as you're organizing yourself and you know oh I have a few that I still need to apply for it kind of keeps it less it's a less stressful process for yourself as well. Yeah definitely and I 
definitely agree with what you said about perseverance because it's such a competitive um, process to go through. You definitely have to um, stay positive and keep persevering through and applying. Now that you're on your internship, what sort of skills have you used from university in your day to day work now? Um, you're talking Kajal, about being organised and persevering when applying. Have you had to use those same skills within your day to day work and the projects you've been working on at Clean Planet? No, definitely. Um, I think if anything, it's just being able to communicate, especially when you're working from home, especially this year at university where everything was online we had to do kind of like our design projects and all of our team group work online and I think when you're in person with someone it is you have to be able to communicate but you have kind of that added bonus of being able to point at things and being able to kind of help and make it easier to communicate with them but definitely online you just kind of have to learn how to communicate in different ways and communicate on a much higher level than what you're necessarily used to when it's in person and I think that's definitely something that we've been able to apply in this internship um, because it has been working from home and using that technology and being able to as simple things like sharing documents and being able to work on all the documents at the same time it's things that you don't really think about and don't realise how important they are until you're working from home and working from remote location. Yeah, I can only add to that really, especially in like the in the changing world that we have now. I believe even like uh, LinkedIn announced that a lot of their staff are continuing to stay, you know, working from home and a lot of people have found it better, better to obviously to work at home and gaining those those skills of technology and and being able to continue your, your team working online is really helpful and I'm, I'm really happy to have had that experience already. Yeah definitely it's a very modern way of working and obviously you guys having being at uni in the middle of a pandemic is a very unique situation to be in but I think what a lot of people in your position have gained is that resilience that you might not have otherwise gained if you weren't thrust into an unprecedented situation so it really does add to your experience, I guess, because you're being able to adapt to situations that you wouldn't have been in if there wasn't in the middle of a pandemic. Um, so Clean Planet Energy, what have you learned about them as a company that you didn't know before? Has any part of the company or working for a clean energy um, company surprised you? Have you learned things that you didn't think were there before? Um. Definitely, yeah. I think uh, doing all the some of the research tasks and stuff, you realise quite the magnitude of um, of what people are going to have to do to try and change the world. You know, with the CO two crisis and with CP, they're managing to combine that with with the plastic crisis and taking the plastic and making these ultra clean fuels. You know, um, it's really difficult um, to find information on like a new tasks. You really have to be innovative and working for CP you realise like how innovative they are really and the people behind are working so hard to try and contribute towards this greater good it's, it's really impressive. Definitely yeah it's exactly what Jack said it's kind of the idea of being able to think on the spot and CP are the at the forefront of this technology it's not kind of like if you look online there's nothing about this yet um, and that's really exciting and really special to be a part of and know in five years time when the company I'm sure will be like flourishing to be able to say that we were part of that maybe just a few months that we were part of it it's exciting to see and really meaningful as well especially when you're working so hard and the team as well are working so hard. I think a lot of um, news stories about climate change are all telling us about the bad stuff that's happened and I think young people often get scared about the future. Has working on the projects you've been working on at Clean Planet made you feel more optimistic about the future and how we're tackling climate change? Yeah definitely and obviously being like even if you say go on LinkedIn and you become part of this small community if you're searching this thing or that thing. You know, you get things like um, BP's massive project in, in Teesside trying to capture um, all of Teesside's CO2 emissions and pump them back in the ground. Just projects like that give you faith that even the big companies that, that get the bad reputation for, you know, like drilling out oil and this and that, 
they actually are really trying to change and adapt to this new um, well, climate crisis that we've found ourselves in. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. I think um, it kind of reminds you it's not the end. It's not the BL, like it's not the end of this whole situation. And there are things that we can do. And of course, as time progresses, we'll have more time to develop these technologies. But it does kind of make you think that it makes you it makes you feel optimistic and makes you think that there is a way out and a solution and something that we can use to kind of prevent the things like all of the CO2 and the plastic and kind of the use of fossil fuels and burning and all of that kind of stuff. If we can find a solution for that, then we'll be so much more better off. Yeah, that's great to hear. And it's also a really positive message to spread that people and young people can change the planet through their careers and jobs that they do in the future. What would you say is the best part of your internship so far and also the biggest challenge that you've faced so far? Oh, um, I'd, I'd say the best part is definitely, you know, meeting like-minded individuals that are trying to pursue like that common goal. Um, I think that's definitely the best thing and everyone's motivated the same way, work, like working hard towards that. And I'd probably say the most challenging thing is probably like working from home. You can't just go and knock on someone's office down down the corridor and, and ask them a question. You've got to send them a message through Teams or it, it's just a different way of working and getting used to that is, is a challenge in itself. But what you learn from that hopefully will benefit you in the future. Definitely, I think for me, the biggest thing is just being able to meet professionals and different people. Often at university, we kind of work with only chemical engineers, but it's so clear to see. And I think we've both experienced this, that the teams are made up of all different types of engineers. And some people aren't even from engineering backgrounds, but it's all of those different people with different backgrounds and different degrees and different stories who kind of make the team. And that's ultimately what makes everything work so well. And I think that's been really interesting because you kind of get to meet people who think about things in a different way and in a different kind of like outlook and from a different background. And I think that's super interesting and something that's been really good. Yeah, it sounds like you two had a really positive and dynamic experience. And you guys have spoken a little bit about your backgrounds, but as a final question, I wanted to ask you, what do you think your future holds? So now that you have this experience under your belt and you're working towards your degrees, what do you think the future holds in terms of your careers? Um, yeah, no, I'd definitely like to pursue something um, to try and contribute better to, to climate change and the CO2 crisis. Definitely it sparked my interest even more than before working for this company and hopefully down the line, you know, I'll be working for this company or a similar company trying to, to solve these issues. That's definitely where I see myself. Yeah, definitely. Similarly, I think this just kind of um, made me more excited to kind of pursue um, and continue going on in this direction and motivated me within my degree as well to kind of keep pushing and keep working because so I can kind of see more of the end point and what the future looks like, which is really nice to have. Um, and be able to kind of envision yourself and what you could be working on in the future and the types of teams that you could be working on and the work, just basically the good work that engineers and companies like CPE are doing. Yeah, that's brilliant. I'm really positive to end our interview. Thank you so much for agreeing to be interviewed for this. I think this is going to be super useful for future students and good luck with the rest of your internship. Thank you. Thanks so much.